Transparency, I'm glad to see the president of Transparency Institute there. They have a global standard. We understand that Guyana has applied for membership of EITI in August 2017. Let me make bold and say, I hope Transparency Institute Guyana Inc. will write EITI and say, unless the, the contracts are disclosed, we should not be admitted as members of EITI. We have to be bold, Troy. We have to be bold. Now, restriction of information. And remember we said that this is the one who was the top one has the difficulty with. This is what was always there. The thing that changed, this here, this 6 of 1997 was added. And this here, instead of 20,000, it, 25,000, it went up to 75,000. That is all the change. Now, when you have a lawyer who can't read, basic legislation, you have a problem. You really do have a problem. That's the only restriction. And it says, no information furnished or information in a report submitted pursuant to this act. It doesn't say about any contract. That is what it says. Where does this cover a contract? Chinese are not fools. We may be quiet and we behave like fools, but I don't think we're fools. This gives you, we, we decided, look, let us work on a model, because nobody's talking about something. What will we get out of oil? Now, assuming 120,000 barrels per day um, and a certain cost, which we have used based on experiences in Brazil and some other countries with characteristics like ours. We should get 328, 328.5 million dollars per annum out of, assuming these, assuming there's no further oil fine, assuming oil prices don't go up or down, assuming there's no change in the cost. Now, all it takes is for the experts, and we are we using world-class experts, construct a simple chart like this, and you could play with all the numbers you want, not only for, the, for this, but for any other kind of contract. That's all you need. This is the dispute resolution process. The law is based on Anna, but you will, you have, this is a little bit complex. Um, you try to settle your differences, otherwise you go to ICSID, the National Center for Dispute Resolution, and you can end up with um, an arbitration in the United States of America. It's a very, it's not unusual, but that's where you end up. Exxon Mobil relations with Dan. And let's say this, Exxon is not the only player, but Exxon does, is involved in 54% of the acreage, and that puts us as a country in a weak situation, because you can't go messing around with big people when your budget suddenly becomes so dependent on their operations. The contract was signed on June 14, the agreement, 1999, and on the same day, a prospecting license was issued by the late President Janet Jaglan. In 2000, September 29, September 29 of 2000, the company declared force majeure and said, look, we have a big problem. This contract, contract can work because of what Suriname had done. They some, uh, you know, the sea Thornton, the naval vet. The, this is a all rig and drill ship. Suriname moved in. In 2000, the matter went to the United Nations. The United Nations pronounced on the border, on the issue, we, we kind of had a settlement. Exxon Mobil then writes in October 2008, very interesting, one year after, a full year after, lifting the force majeure status. This is what I don't understand. Why the then president, I'm not sure who it is, 
on the 30th of October, issued an addendum and extension deed to the Petroleum Prospecting License sign. It modified the contract area, it modified the relinquishment obligation, and it modified the initial period. In other words, it said they don't need to give a half anymore. They can't keep on. I am not even sure that is legal. Now, as I said, that to me placed us in a rather um, weak situation. Situation. The then government allowed something that really ought to, they should have said, okay, what happens when you have force majeure? Is the clock stops, and as soon as force majeure is lifted, it resumes. So if you had one and a half years, if you had one and a, one and a half years, then you have two and a half years still to go for your four years. That's all that should happen. But look what happened. We're still on ExxonMobil. The PPP government having done that, then you get, and you have to look at the official gazette. Mr. Trotman never said this. In August 2nd, 2016, official reveals that a new agreement was signed between Guyana and Exxon. <coughs> Why? Why? There was no need for a new agreement? I'm not even sure. It was lawful because the agreement covers the period. Now, there is a point in law that, look, if you can make an agreement and an interpretation of that agreement can mean plural and man mean woman and all of those things. But I'm not sure within this context it was, it was necessary. And certainly, I don't think it was in our public power interest. And I believe the minister should explain what he did.